Hey folks, welcome to part 19 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. Our first question is going to be true or false. Running total is a quick table calculation. Is it true or false? First of all, what is a running total? And to demonstrate this, we will go into Tableau. And I have a blank workbook here. I'm connected to the sample Superstore data set that's available to you. Let's do something like um, sales by category. It's a quick and easy one. And then, in fact, I'm going to open this up a little bit more. So we drill down into the subcategories as well. Um, you'll notice we have the sum of sales by, you know, the combination of category and subcategory. But one thing you could do if you right click on this pill, this measure over here, you have an option to do a quick table calculation. And in that you have a bunch of different options to choose from, such as running total, difference, percent difference, percent of total, rank percentile, moving average, and all of these other ones that become available based on what's in the visualization. But again, what's running total gonna do just for the sake of uh, you know the exam? If I right click, if I click on that, you'll notice um, each of those uh, subsequent sum of sales are now being aggregated as they go down. Um, um, along this dimension essentially. So that's what's happening. As you notice, every single row is basically building upon the last one. And the reason why, again, we can demonstrate this if I bring in uh, another sum of sales here, you will now see, again, so again, the very first op the very first uh, data point that we had here was bookcases with a sale of 115,361. And then as you subsequently go on for chairs, it's 335,000, but, the running total because it's a quick table calculation. What it's doing is it's quickly giving you a running total based on the table that you see in this visualization and how it's being partitioned. And that's why every single subsequent row that you go down is going to incrementally increase and build on the previous row. But again, for purpose of this question, what did we have to use here? We had to use a quick table calculation. So uh, going back to this, running total is a quick table calculation. This one's gonna be true. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, which type of join displays only records that have matching values in both tables? And this isn't just a Tableau question. It doesn't matter what world of BI you live in, whether it's the back end in terms of SQL or if you do Power BI, it, it's really um, pretty much a mainstream topic that you should know as far as uh, joins are concerned when working with data. So uh, what type of join? Is it going to be the left join, the right join, the inner join, or the outer join where you would only see records that have matching values in both tables? So not just one or the other, both tables. For this, we will reference the table documentation. Again, this one talks about joining your data. I'll leave this down in the description. But if you go down here, it's gonna give you a very good overview of what each of those joins do. So the first one you'll see here is the inner join. And in fact, if you look at the you know, representative icons over here, which you'll also see, I'll, I'll show you in Tableau, but um, they can provide you pretty good indication just based on the symbol, what it's doing. So what it's doing is when you use an inner join to combine tables, the result is a table that contains values that have matches in both tables, right? So in this case, for this particular question, the solution will be the inner join. Now, again, there's a number of different options. There's a left join where you get everything from that first table, but you only get the matching records um, from the second table. Uh, correspondingly, the opposite is true for a right join and full, uh, for the full outer join, you basically get all records from both tables you know, wh wherever they match, you'll see the match where they don't, you'll see nulls for the, for the other table. Uh, again, as I promised, going into Tableau, you will see that option when you are in the logical layer. So right now, this is the physical layer. If we go in, uh, sorry, that's the logical layer. Now that we're in the physical layer, uh, this is where you actually see tables, right? Order is made up of one table. And once you try to bring in another table, because you are uh, basically showing Tableau that you want to perform a join, you will then get this uh, inner join by default, right? And you have the option of changing that. So you could do left join, right join, full outer join. You can identify what fields you want to perform the join on. And that's basically in a nutshell how it works. So let me just undo this here. Um, but yeah, that is in summary how, uh, how a join looks or how the symbols look below. Moving on, next question. Which file format is used to save Tableau workbook files? Is it .tdsx, .twbx, 
dot hyper or dot tableau you should absolutely know this for the exam it's probably going to come up at least a few times so uh we're going to reference the tableau documentation over here but um this one again talks about tableau file types and folders and essentially these are the main uh tableau file types or extensions that you should be aware of so the first one is dot twb which is just a tableau workbook no strings attached no data, no any of that other stuff as far as your images, assets, things like that. Um, then you have your bookmarks, your to, uh, .tbm. Then you have your .twbx, which again, it's similar to a Tableau workbook, but then now you have all your kind of bells and whistles. It's a package workbook, which means you're gonna have, it's gonna be a zip file, uh, and you are gonna have all the supporting local file uh, data as well as background images. Like I said, all the other additional stuff, including the data. Um, as far as the hyper dot hyper file, that's your extract file dot TDS is just your uh, Tableau uh, data source file just containing the information necessary to make the connection. And then you have your package dot TDSX uh, file, which essentially is going to have the data along with all this other information, how you, you know, connect and all your metadata in terms of, uh, as you can see here, the, the changing as you can see here, the default properties, creating cal calculated fields, so on and so forth. But again, for purposes of this question, if you want to save a Tableau workbook, um, what format would you use? Again, .tdsx, that is for the actual data source. .twbx, that one is for the packaged workbook. So that's one you would use. .hyper, that's for the extract. That's not something you would use. .tableau is just, um, that's not actually an extension. That's more of a distractor. So the only solution here is going to be the uh, .twbx. Next question. Which feature in Tableau enables you to repoint references to a column? Is it uh, swap field? Is it refactor? Is it replace references? Or is it the replace function? So again, what feature in Tableau enables you to repoint references to a column? So what this is saying is, um, let's say I built my dashboard. I have a number of different sheets, right? So I have like, um, I have my sales by category. Then I have another sheet. Then I again have sales by, I don't know, location, right? So, you know, you build this giant dashboard and then maybe somewhere along the line you decide, oh, I, I didn't want to use the sales uh, measure, I wanted to use a different measure. Or in a lot of cases, maybe um, in your back end you have a SQL query and you introduce a new column and you want to replace an existing column with the new column, but you have this measure um, represented in so many different views. So you shouldn't really have to go to every single sheet to make that update. Is there a quick way to just say, hey, wherever you see some of sales, I want to use a different field instead? What would you use out of these options to make that work? Well, um, luckily Tableau has a very easy way to do it. So again, we're gonna, what field do you want to change? We want to be able to change sales to profit. So once you know what you wanna change and what you wanna change it to, you're gonna right click what you want to change, which in this case is sum of sales. And then down here, you'll notice it says replace references. If I click that, now I can just type in or uh, click on which field I want to replace with. Again, we want to do profit in this case. I'm going to click on profit, I'm going to click OK, and voila, it now replaced the sum of sales throughout this workbook. So again, if you remember sheet three, we have basically a map of sum of sales. Now it's representing sum of profit. So that's kind of your one-stop shop to be able to repoint one field to another, if that makes sense. So um, there's no actual feature called swap field. There's nothing um, relevant called refactor in Tableau. There's um, obviously a replace references, which is the solution here. And there is, so there was a replace function, but it's not to, uh, you know, be able to repoint a field. If I was to replace, uh, use a replace function, that's more so for strings. So if you, 
within a string, if you want it to maybe, if you have a substring, so if you have like a word like W-O-R-D and you want to replace the letter O with the letter I, you would use something like this where you, you know, you have three different parameters. So what's the string that I'm looking at? What is the substring that I'm looking to replace? And what is the replacement? So there is a replace function, but that's not what you use to repoint references to a column. For that, you're going to want to use the replaces, uh, the replace references, excuse me. So that's going to be the solution here. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Examiner Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available, so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know, practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, be sure to like the video if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. I'll be more than happy to help you out. And of course, as always, I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.